This is Obliterator, Australia's most destructive featherweight combat robot. Built by Team Death Roll's Glenn Rose, it has mangled countless robots. And now it's mine. But there's one big problem. This robot is too destructive. With a weapon blade that weighs over 4 kilos at speeds of over 7,000 RPM, our arena simply can't handle it. So to compete in the upcoming Robo Wars Nationals 2024, I'm going to have to nerf it. But the real question is, can a 3D printed gear train survive this? How's it going guys, Angus here from Makers Muse, and if you've been following the channel for a while, you'll know just how much I love combat robotics. But lately, I've only really been making tiny little ones. They're fun and affordable, but this is next level. The Featherweight Combat Robot class, despite its name, is anything but, weighing in at 30 pounds or 13.6 kilograms. Not as large as the ones on BattleBots, but more than capable of incredible amounts of destruction. Australia actually got its start in combat robotics in featherweights, and I've built plenty over the years, but as time has gone on, these machines have become more and more dangerous, and Obliterator represents the peak of that arms race. The weapon blade is made from Hardox 500, a wear-resistant steel used in mining applications, and it's spun up to speed by this massive inrunner from TP Power, capable of pumping out over six kilowatts. All of this power is pushed through a custom built right angle gearbox to the weapon assembly using micro V belts. And it's honestly a work of art, very destructive art. But to compete this year, things have to change. We have a new tip speed limit of 60 meters a second being imposed in order to keep things somewhat sane. But what is tip speed and why does it matter? Well, as this bar gets up to speed, the tip, the tooth that impacts its opponents, is actually traveling at a speed proportional to the diameter and RPM. The larger the diameter, the higher the tip speed for the same given RPM. And at 340 millimeters long, with a max theoretical RPM of 7,700, the current tip speed is 141 meters a second. Hmm. Talking to Glenn, I don't think he ever really got it up to this speed during many of the fights, so even at a tip speed of less than half the original, this bot should still be plenty dangerous. And I have three ideas on how I'm going to achieve it. Approach number one, simply swap out the inrunner for a lower KV variant. The KV value for a motor gives you the motor's theoretical RPM value per volt, which means that the current 1,750 KV motor spins at 38,500 RPM at 22 volts but a 750 kV motor would only spin at 16,500 RPM for the same given voltage. Approach number two, simply change the weapon reduction. The existing right angle gearbox is pretty much set, but the output pulley could be doubled in size from 60 millimeters in diameter to 120 millimeters in diameter, and that would land us pretty close to the legal tip speed. With the existing motor, this means that spin up times would also be pretty much instantaneous. And finally, approach three, which is the most insane. Adapt the existing gearbox to suit a different motor altogether, like a lower KV outrunner, which would have more torque at a lower RPM than an equivalent inrunner. Out of the gate, approach one was a huge fail. I got in touch with TP Motor to request a custom motor built at the required KV, and they ghosted me. So I decided to hedge my bets and build two weapon systems, one with a larger pulley, and one with a brand new motor assembly. And this is what I came up with. It looks mega funky, but bear with me, I have my reasons. The 5045 brushless outrunner is plenty powerful, but it's actually just a little bit too large in diameter to sit perfectly in line with the existing gearbox. So I opted to couple it via a one-to-one -one spur gear train. This assembly mates to the existing gearbox through a custom adapter plate, and the real secret source is this component combining the spur gear with shaft and keyway because it's 3D printed out of tool steel. Bet you didn't know that was possible, huh? Well, with this video sponsor PCBWay, you can 3D print parts in a huge range of materials, as well as CNC, laser cut, and much more. Simply head over to PCBWay.com and navigate to the process you want to get a quote in, 
and upload your design. From here, you can select what material you want it to be made from, and they have some really sexy alloys to choose from, like 7075 aluminium and S7 tool steel. You can define the finish you like, as well as a ton of other parameters, and then a real engineer will check over your parts to make sure they're manufacturable in your chosen process, and finalize your quote. If there's any borderline details, then they'll also check with you before proceeding, which is really good customer service. So why not give them a try? You'll find links in the video description. The quality of the CNC parts is stunning and they perfectly fit with the existing gearbox, but it's the metal print that really blows me away. I've had metal parts printed before, but never in such a durable metal for such a demanding application. I'm told that this process is mostly used in industry to 3D print complex injection molding tools with built-in water cooling channels, and it's a unique kind of tool steel. So I actually have no idea if it'll withstand the abuse of robot combat. So I got to work assembling the new gearbox and putting the machine back together. And after many nights soldering and wiring, the robot was ready for its first spin-up test. So I clamped him down, removed the safety locks, and vacated the room. I've built dangerous combat robots before, but this thing absolutely terrifies me. The screen from the gearbox is absolutely visceral, but the most important thing is, did we hit the RPM needed for the new tip speed limit? I don't think my RPM meter is super accurate, but it looks like it topped out at around 2800 RPM, which is actually only 51 meters per second. So comfortably within the limit. For the second weapon assembly, I got some assistance to lathe up a larger pulley, which goes over the existing one and using the original powerful inrunner. So this is the result of that spin up test. It's way more powerful, but it comes with a significant downside of having this huge vulnerable pulley and the weight of it puts the robot pretty close to the weight limit. Still, with no more time left, we packed our things and headed up the coast to the event. And it rained a lot. Unfortunately, Obliterator was plagued with electronics problem from the get-go, mostly self-inflicted. I was using this brand new Radio Master MT12 pistol radio because I love controlling my robots this way and it runs Edge TX, which means it can be customized in a myriad of ways, but the receiver it came with wouldn't fail safe properly. Luckily, it turns out that a cheap AliExpress four channel receiver did and that came to the rescue here. The biggest problem, however, came from my drive motor ESCs. I used ARIA 70 amp ESCs that were programmed using AM32 firmware, which gives really good low speed control and it worked awesome during all my testing back home, but they started to play up the instant my first fight started, which was a shame because my first fight was against one of the oldest championship bots in the country, Bender. And I had the bot set up with the original powerful motor, but the much more vulnerable pulley. And because of my radio issues, I didn't have time to swap the weapon assembly for this fight. So I just had to send it, trying my best to keep Bender away from the pulley. This is how that fight went. There was heaps of damage. I pretty much totaled their frame and I got a wheel, but Obliterator did not escape unscathed, with a large hit peeling the back open slightly and the pulley taking a few licks of damage as well. With only one drive motor working, there was no avoiding the damage, so I decided to just full send my assembly with that little 3D printed spur gear. And after another fight with some drive issues, I borrowed some controllers and finally had Obliterator all dialed in. And this, is what it can do. Oh! 
With Obliterator living up to its name in several amazing fights, I got it all the way to the semi-finals in a fight against Derive from Broken Link Robotics. This is James's first ever featherweight robot and he made an amazing machine with a little vertical spinner and lifting arm. So you've got a tanky, well-driven control bot against an all offense horizontal spinner. As you'd expect, this fight was insane. It's not a proper combat robot event unless one of the robots catches fire and the crowd absolutely loved it. I didn't know it at the time, but in those violent impacts, one of the drive motors in Obliterator actually shook loose. And there's this amazing slow-mo from James from Blue Green Robotics, where you can see the weapon blade eating the motor and ejecting the smoking carcass from the robot. And this shorted the wires and resulted in the speed controller self-combusting. I didn't feel too bad though, because Derive went on to win the entire event. And considering this is James's first ever featherweight combat robot, that is an incredible achievement. And you should definitely go check out his build videos linked here. But we all want to know, did that 3D printed gear survive? Well, let's find out. Alrighty, well here he is after his fights up in Brizzy. So I haven't really had taken a close look at the weapon motor gearbox. I don't know how the gears did. It was still spinning up to the end till it caught fire. So let's take a look, crack these screws open. Alrighty. So it is full of sand because when it caught fire, they dumped sand on it. <laughs> uh, but here is the weapon gearbox. So belt's a bit loose from the fight. The first impressions, those gears look all right. So let's pop it out and take a look. Oh, it's so sharp. <laughs> Watch it. Oh, I see all the damage from, from Derive hitting it. <laughs> Suddenly was the sucker for punishment. Oh, it took a lot of punishment from James. <laughs> <laughs> oh. There goes his guts. There we go. That's the gearbox with a 3D printed spur gear and a store-bought gear on the motor. Honestly, it seems to run just as smooth as when I built it. If anything, the gear's gotten smoother because when it was made, it had the rough finish from the powder process. I'm honestly really stoked with that. Final thoughts on the fight? Uh, James deserved the win. He's such a good driver. Like he did not let me spin up at all. He kept me into the wall and it's so stackable. He just perfectly stacked it. So kept you pinned to the ropes. Yeah, yeah. That's his technique. That's his technique. He's like, oh, I don't need armor. I just don't get hit. And well, it worked. So <laughs> fair enough. This build would not have been possible without the help of so many amazing people. I want to thank Glenn, who built Obliterator in the first place, who bailed me out several times as I got this machine working for the event. Then Steve, who ran and organized the event. That's a huge amount of effort all in itself. And I want to extend a special thank you to James from Blue Green Robotics for filming all of the fights at the event, including the incredible slow-mo I've used in this video. And if you want to see other fights from the Robo Wars Nationals 2024, I highly recommend checking out his channel in the link description, where he's got footage for all of the fights from the event. A big thanks to PCBWay for sponsoring this video and making this build possible with their 3D printed tool steel gear. And if you enjoyed this video here on Makers News, be sure to subscribe so you don't miss any future content. Thanks for watching guys, bye.